Um, all right, this is from Oscar Deus. It says, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is undergoing some big changes. There's a backstory to the game now, for a start, and the same update, version 4.1, brings a visual revamp to the game's first map, Erangel. Developer PUBG Core says it has, quote, improved the graphical quality of Erangel's various areas and terrains across the board, end quote. Those improvements range from various incidental textures and features around the island to specific landmarks such as mansions and the prison. Quote, we've updated existing terrain, signage, and buildings and have added a small number of buildings to some areas as well. Uh, end quote, the developer states, quote, the better illustrate Erangel's history, terrain elements have been added or revised, trenches, blast marks, camo nets, and abandoned tanks have been added across different areas of the map, end quote. Let's check out these screenshots. Ooh, these are nice and big. Um, I have not played PUBG in a hot minute. It's been almost a year. But as you can see, we have a blank beach here. They've added some of these X-y things and some cannons. I have much military training, guys. I went on a first date with a girl where we watched Black Hawk Down together, all right? I know things. And, the, and these things on the beach here, they're called X-y things, all right? And then we got cannons, and then we got Heidi things right here, all on the beach. Thank you, Josh Hartnett, for the lesson. Um. You got this trench that's been carved here into, into the side of this hill um, with, again, some bunker things, some bridgey things, and a cannon. Inoperable, I imagine. Let's see. In this one, this is just updated textures and maybe updated lighting as well. Maybe it's a different time of day. The sun is casting a different shadow. Are they getting longer or shorter? The world may never know. And then let's see what's been added on this one. This is, this is one of those spot the differences. This is another texture thing. And also uh, part of the backstory was that the Russians were very uh, fond of basketball, um, but that the government would not allow it. And so they targeted these basketball courts. Wait, did they take out an entire like sniper nest and just put it in a basketball hoop? It's pretty sweet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, if these are the same exact area, then that's what they've done. There's these warehouses over here. They've taken out the sniper nest. They've put in some bleachers in a basketball court. Hey, man, this world is turning around. They're reclaiming humanity after whatever tragedy struck. What else we got? All right. So this one, more dilapidated, much more detail going on here. This is cool. This is really cool. Like... Fallout 76? This is PUBG. But maybe Fallout 76. I don't know if you just stepped away and came back and didn't know. Or if you were making a joke that this looks like Fallout 76. They all ran as... This ran as janky as Fallout 76. I don't know if it's gotten smoother. Look, I give PUBG a lot of shit. And I think that most of that shit is deservedly so. Because that game was just hot fucking garbage on the platform I played on. For... A long time I played on Xbox One, and I'm sure that the experience is a lot better on PC. But I paid money for the what I got on Xbox One, and there were times where it was just straight fucking unplayable. But I do have to give the developer credit for sticking with this game and creating not only a dedicated audience. It's not like a small dedicated audience. They still have a very large player base, and they still generate a lot of cash with this game. Oh, reclaiming humanity after after a tragedy. Yes, that is very Fallout. Fallout 76-esque. Just building up them basketball goals. That's how you get humanity back in, according to the malevolent spirit of Larry Johnson. I say that because this is a uh, this is a game used basketball from the Charlotte Hornets. Official game ball, baby. I think my dad like did security for the old stadium or something and got me this ball. And now the malevolent spirit of uh, Larry Johnson speaks to me. Roy Speedron, what is up? My dude. My dad used to, so we used to play in the driveway with that ball. And my dad was always like, guys, don't play with that ball. You fucking idiot. I'm just kidding. My dad, my dad doesn't talk like that. He was like, do not play with that ball in the driveway. And we never understood why. Like he, he never took the time to explain to me, like, hey, don't play with that ball outside because it is, it is a game-used ball 
for a basketball team that ultimately went defunct for a while, came back as the Bobcats, and is now the Hornets again. This is the the OG Hornets from back in the day, the malevolent spirit of Larry Johnson. Um, he would just be like, "Hey, don't play with that ball outside." Like, but it looks like an NBA basketball. We had like these other two basketballs that did not look like r- real basketball. One had like all the SEC conference logos on them. We had another one that uh, was like blue and green. Like this was the only ball we had that looked like what, you know, MJ was playing with. And so we wanted to play with this ball in the driveway. Little did I know it was an actual game used basketball. Come on, Bill. I am. That's why I like to call my dad. Bill. I am. Billiam. Will. I am. His name's Bill. And he hates when I call him Billiam, but I do it anyway. But I'm going to do it anyway. Guys, I, I, just, I really just honestly want to sit here and chill with you guys and chat all night. I'm not really feeling playing anything. I'm just having a good time. Having a good time. Uh, well, let's get back to um, reclaiming Russia here. Um, again, much more detail added here to these nuclear stacks. This is uh, over at Power Plant. I imagine. So some additional buildings that are added. It, oh, I was giving credit to the developers, right? Like they've stuck with this game and they've maintained a very dedicated fan base that is quite large and quite willing to part with their cash in order to uh, get the weird cosmetics that they put out. Like, I don't know. It's, the, the, the cosmetic structure never really like appealed to me in PUBG. And I think they've gotten a little zanier with their, their cosmetics, but uh, yeah, it's just never... Never spoke to me really like, oh, you can get this pair of dark brown khaki pants. Dark brown khaki pants. Let's see. Oh, what is this? They just added a whole new statue. They tore out this old statue and added another statue, but then this stuff behind it got... So, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, some things are getting nicer. Some things are getting more dilapidated. Like, there's no real consistency in what is being updated how visually. But uh, it does look brighter. And this statue looks way cooler. Uh, The Eye of the Illuminati watching over you. Jay-Z, baby. Along with the malevolent spirit of Larry Johnson. Is it still making money or is it just goodwill on the developer's part? No, this game is still making, like, hella cash. Let me uh let me pull it up. Last month there was a story. So last year it still made one billion dollars, according to Forbes. It was beat out by Fortnite, Dungeon Fighter Online, League of Legends, Pokemon Go, uh, Crossfire, Honor of Kings, and Fate. Clash Royale, and then uh, PUBG is number 11 here. So it was still one of 11 games that made over a billion dollars in 2018. PUBG is also a mobile game. It's also very, very big in countries that are not the United States. Very, very popular in other countries, so... It is hard to imagine with all the other games that are so similar, but PUBG is kind of unique in its approach to Battle Royale. It's very, it's very, very realistic. It's very, very grounded. Um, and it's very, very global as well. And it's, and it's still cheap. I mean, you still have to pay to play it, but uh, it hasn't adopted a full free-to-play model, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so that money is also just money that's being spent to get the game. And it's survival-based. Roy Speedrun says janky on purpose. It's not an excuse for me. <laughs> not an excuse for me. I, I, the jank always, which I played on Xbox One for a long time, and so the jank was magnified like up to 100. And it really just felt like, oh, we wanted to make 30 bucks off of an unfinished game. And I don't say that very much about a game. I'm not one of those guys who tosses around like, oh man, I hate paying $60 for unfinished fucking games, blah, 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 blah. Like, rarely say that. Um, yeah, the Xbox version was awful. It was awful. It was rushed. Xbox needed something to differentiate themselves from, you know, from PlayStation. They needed an exclusive. 
PUBG was a great exclusive for them to grab at the time. It was a huge get. Like, if you guys don't remember when Xbox announced that PUBG was going to be exclusive, it was massive news. Massive, massive news. It was a huge get for them, and that, but they had to rush it to market. Because it was a ticking time bomb. They knew that other games were going to come and do this, and they were probably going to do it better, and they were probably going to be platform agnostic, and PlayStation was going to get their hands on one of these, these successful ones. And so the window was small, and they had to take advantage of it, and they rushed the product out. No doubt about it. Not a doubt in my mind about it. But, yeah, these updates are cool. I think that, that was the last image in the slideshow. The updates are awesome. Um, you know, PUBG is also unique in the sense that there's multiple maps to play on, which is not what you get with Call of Duty or um, with Fortnite or with Apex Legends. Roy Speedrun says, I mean, the game barely ran on PC when it launched on Xbox, and that is absolutely true. Very, very true. I've heard a lot of good things that it, it's better, and I love PUBG. If PUBG was polished and perfect, it is the battle royale that I would play, and I think all of my friends agree with that as well. Maybe Larry would still play Apex, but for me, like, I love the grounded style. Um... I love how huge the world is, although it is a little frustrating when you just feel like you're being chased by the circle all night. Um, but it would be my game of choice if it ran more smoothly. Maybe I need to try it on PC. Because anything, <laughs> if it's even like 50% better than what it was on Xbox, it's going to feel like a whole new 